there's more than one way to make a circle. In this baby quilt, I tested all the ways to make circles so you can find the way that works for you. We play with traditional hand applique, different methods for fusible applique, and decorative stitching. The right needle, the right feet, the right thread, the right tool. Find your right way to make a circle. Hi there, welcome to the 3800 series of Love of Quilting. I'm Sarah Gallegos here with my quilting buddy, Angela Huffman, and you will be seeing spots after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Circles and circles and circles and circles. I want to talk great. about bubbles. Okay. So this, uh, the quilt that I made was inspired by um, bubble circuits, mm -hmm. and it was a large quilt though. It was like a, I think it's, well, it's bigger than a twin. Okay. And um, I wanted to make something a little bit smaller, but still use the whole circle idea, mm -hmm. and so then I I thought, well, I like mermaids and mermaids have water bubbles. And so there it went. So now I call it O barnacles. <laughs> totally makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how my brain works, right? So we're just going to talk today about many different ways that you can get circles in your projects. And there's a lots and lots of different ways. So the first way I want to talk about is a hand applique, needle turn applique. Mm -hmm. And we've got this great fabric here. And I just want to kind of find a little mermaid that I love. And I've got just a piece of template plastic so I can kind of see through it. Right. And I'm going to give you a heat away pin. And if you would trace around that, um, he, look, she's even got a little friend, a little, little fishy friend. A little friend. fishy friend yeah. and some little bubbles around her. And then you just want to make sure, you know, that you consider that you're going to have a quarter inch seam outside of this. So make sure that your face of your mermaid is centered the way you want her to be centered and right. all that stuff. Okay, so then you would cut that out a quarter of an inch around okay. what you've drawn. And we've already done that. If you want to move that to the side. Sure. So I've already done this one and um, inchy pretty. Very cute. Yeah. And so there's that mark. Okay. And so we're going to prepare it for needle turn applique. So I've got a needle there threaded with just some cotton thread and you're going to stay between the drawn line and the cut line. Okay. And you're going to do a running stitch around that space in between. Okay. So just a running st uh, stitch. It doesn't need to be really close together. Um, but you're going to go all the way around Basically the circle. Basically only for you when yeah. I do this. <laughs> there are some things that I like to do by hand. This is one of them was preparing the circles. It's actually, it's actually kind of fun, I have to admit. So I have another one over here that I've already prepared. So I've cut that circle out and I've done my little running stitch all the way around. And then I'm going to place that same piece of template plastic in here. And this one can survive the heat of an iron, a low iron. Okay. So I've got it in there and I'm just going to pull. And when you pull that running stitch, it gathers all the way around your circle and I'm just going to hold it taut and I've got some starch and water here um, mixed in that little container and I'm using a stencil brush. If you don't have a stencil brush, um, use a Q-tip. That'll okay. work too. And then I've got my iron on very low heat and I just want to kind of have that, that starch dry. And it's there just to help it maintain that circular shape. Right. Really? That's right. Yeah. You know, circles are tough because the eye sees symmetry so right. easily. And so if your circles get wonky, the eye goes right to it and you go, well, that mermaid's having trouble breathing and her. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to worry about cutting exactly perfectly no. around the edges of your circle, because if you've perfectly cut the template, then when you draw that thread up, it's going to lay flat. Right. The template is doing all the work. Got it. Okay. So I'm just going to remove that plastic and then I'm just going to carefully draw that back up and just hit it with an iron one more time since I removed the plastic. And now I have my circle ready to go. And do you have some scissors? You can cut that little thread sure. tail there. And here's the background fabric I'm going to put it on. So I'm going to go ahead and find the center of my background fabric. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to fold it north, south, east, west. And I'm going to do the same thing with my little circle here. I'm going to fold him north, south, east, west. And I'm just doing that so I can more easily position this in the dead center sure. of my fabric. And then I like to use, it's a basting glue and it just holds everything in place so I don't have to fight all the little pins and prick myself. 
So just a few little dots here and there. Yeah, I go about a half of an inch around that circle. And then I'm gonna put this on, I'm gonna actually move it to the ironing surface. And I'm gonna line it up. And then when I hit it with an iron, it'll kind of set that. Right. It still comes out with water, but I don't know, when I'm appliquing and I get hit with a pen, um, you know, that's no fun. I use glue for a lot of things where I need something to hold steady and I don't wanna to have to worry about pins in the body of it. 